This is the Zoom failover demo. For this setup, we have a data center router, the head end, which is Boston in my config. And we have a branch, which is Kansas City in my config. And there is a primary WAM path and a backup internet path between the branch and headquarters data center router. For this demo, I'll be hosting a Zoom meeting in a Zoom cloud and I'll be remote desktoping into a Windows 10 machine in a branch, and I will join that Zoom meeting. And what I will demonstrate here is the ability for the SSR to be able to maintain that user experience for that Zoom video meeting and that user. So when I exceed specific SLAs on this primary WAM path, it will stately fail over that session across the backup internet path. And so the SLAs that are configured for this demo is right here. So as long as latency is less than 100 milliseconds and jitter is less than 50 milliseconds and packet loss is less than 5%, you're in a sunny day condition. So maintain that session and that service across the primary WAN path. The moment there's an outage or any of these SLAs are exceeded or not met, then stately fail over that session over the backup internet path. And what's going to be demonstrated here is one, we're not going to impair the user experience when this is all happening. Number two, we're going to provide the analytics of what's happening at the network bits and bytes level. And number three, when there's problems and issues at the network bits and bytes level, we are not going to impact the user experience. So let's get started. So I'm going to log in into the Windows 10 machine and attend that Zoom meeting, which is going on right now. So I'm going to put in the meeting ID. It's going to ask me for the passcode. It should let me in automatically. And there I am. And so as you can see, the quality of the video is very good. So I'm going to go into the Juniper SSR conductor to take a look at what's happening at the network bits and bytes level. And so I have a chart here that shows the bandwidth between the branch, which is Kansas City, and a data center, which is Boston. So if you look here, we have some bandwidth across the blue line, which is designated the primary WAN path. And there is barely any bandwidth across the backup internet path. Um, so the blue line is the primary WAN path bandwidth. And the red line is the backup internet path. In a sunny day condition, this is going to happen because the primary path is the WAN path. The only way the backup internet path is going to have any bandwidth if there is an outage on the primary WAN path or those SLAs are not met. I have a second chart which me measures latency between the Kansas City branch router and the Boston data center headquarters router. And as you can see, there's two lines. So the blue line denotes the latency between the branch and data center, which is 13 milliseconds. And the red line denotes the latency between the branch and data center router. So they're both under 100 milliseconds, so we're within SLA. So now for this demo, um, I have the ability to go into the primary WAN path and insert some impairments. So specifically, I'm going to impair the latency across the primary WAN path by adding more than 100 milliseconds, so it exceeds the SLA. So I'm going to insert 55 milliseconds of latency from the branch to data center, and from the data center to branch, which gives you 55 plus 55 plus what's there, which exceeds the SLA. So job number one of the SSR is to maintain a user experience, which is the, the Zoom video shown in this Windows 10 window. Job number two of the SSR is to provide the visibility and analytics to what's happening at the network's, network bits and bytes level, which is this window here. And job number three is no matter what's happening at network bits and bytes level, you never ever impact 
the user experience job number one. So as you can see here, if we take a look at the latency chart, it shows that the blue line, which is the latency across the primary WAM path, has gone over 100 milliseconds, which exceeds the SLA. And the red line, which is the latency across the primary, the backup internet, is still at 24 milliseconds. Now, at the time of this spike in latency, the bandwidth across the primary WAN path, which is the blue line, went to zero. But the bandwidth across the red line, which is the backup internet path, took over. So while this was all happening, the user experience from the perspective of the user on the Windows 10 machine that's watching this Zoom video was never impacted. There was no session connection loss. There was no resetting of the connection. The user experience was maintained. With secure vector routing, it is a tunnel-free tunnel technology which saves on bandwidth. And depending on your services and applications and the size of your payload, you can save upwards of 30 to 50% on bandwidth. It just depends. Uh, for this Zoom video service that I have running, it's got large payloads, so you may not realize that high of a bandwidth, but you will, see, you will still see significant bandwidth savings. So I'm going to keep the Zoom video going, keep the traffic flowing. I'm going to go back to the SSR conductor. I'm going to go back to our custom reports, and we're going to take a quick look at what we have here. And so we have a secure vector routing comparison chart, which provides the estimated bandwidth savings when you compare our secure vector routing technology to a traditional SD-WAN technology. So if I go into that chart, you will see that it's measuring in real time the bandwidth savings I have right now. So, so far over the past five minutes um, since running this Zoom video service, I've saved 14.35% on bandwidth using secure vector routing versus a traditional SD-WAN overlay technology. And specifically, when you factor in an SD-WAN technology that uses VXLAN, IPsec, and GRE. So pretty significant here. And what I'll offer up is the savings, this savings is for just one router, right? The branch to the data center. Imagine now if you've got hundreds or even thousands of routers, all of a sudden, this savings of 14.35% in aggregate at the head end or data center or at the hub adds up. 